Hey everybody, uh, this is Mick here. We're just doing pre-show banter. Um, I don't even know what we're going to be talking about. Before we started broadcasting, we were talking about bespoke ice cream and fountain pens and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm not making Makes us sound <laughs> far fancier than we actually are. Well, that's that's my one, like, I think my one and only fancy is fountain pens and inks. But I don't know. I will say uh, for those who I was talking with Flynn about one of my favorite inks. If you are in the um, artist scene or want to play around with an interesting ink, you should check out from Noodler's Inks. There's a thing called General of the Armies, which is a really interesting um, anti tamper ink that. It's kind of difficult to work with because it's a suspension as opposed to a normal ink. So you have to keep the, um, like at least once a day, you have to turn the bottle upside down to keep the metal salts in suspension. But it, um, you can tell if somebody has been tampering with the ink because um, like you can, uh, it, it stains the cellulose of the paper. It also, another neat function is that it fluoresces under UV light. So it's a real cool ink. Um, the downside is it won't work with every fountain pen because of the very, very tiny metal particles. You could clog the feed, or if you have a really tight tolerance nib, um, it, it won't flow appropriately. Yeah, but if you can use it in forensics, that makes it really interesting. But you're saying it rusts as well slightly, so you can kind of tell when it was written. Oh yeah, so I, uh, I had, so I, I very rarely have, uh, I don't do a whole lot of cases now, but not too terribly long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, I had one that was looking like it was heading to arbitration. And for some reason, the opposing side was challenging my handwritten notes. And I had used the General of the Army's ink, and I went through the fact that it stains the cellulose, that um, because it was this deeper shade of green versus the um, like lighter green that it comes out, I knew that it was at least a couple weeks old. Like the, the look on the opposing attorney's face, he was just like, ah. Uh, yeah, how do you argue that one? Thank you. And well, it was weird because like he almost stopped asking me any questions. Like there were. <laughs> There were plenty of things that like if he had pressed i would have been like well that's a good question and here's what i know but um i guess because i had the ink game on lockdown he kind of was assuming that the rest of everything was on lockdown at least you had something on lockdown yeah and then like um you know what no more questions for you <laughs> that's kind of how it went So, Flynn, you were talking before the um, webinar started that you use the pilot inks. Like, what's what are some of your shades? Or oh goodness, that that's a loaded question. I just ordered a red one. I don't have really any red ink, but I like them. They don't because that's a problem. A lot of fountain pen inks is on paper. They just either flow or feather wrong, and it looks bad. So I like them. They don't do that there. Which one is it? It is the Tsukiyo. I really like that one. It's like this teal kind of color. Uh oh. So right little. Okay. But I I use all sorts. I have a steadily growing ink collection that I should probably stop growing as much as I do, but Yeah. You know, it's okay to have a couple indulgences. Yeah. But, oh, it's really oh. my own indulgence. Yeah, I, I, I will say that when I'm taking handwritten notes, the thing that I was really surprised by, um, and I noticed this after my very first case that I was using a fountain pen exclusively for note taking, the level of effort that it takes to write is, it's a totally different game. Like it's, you're not pressing as hard, or at least for me, I'm not. And so well, you're not I, supposed to. It's supposed to make writing easier. And I was saying to you, I'm on my fourth notebook since I started this internship. So I'm, I, it's a nice value back and say, oh, it's what I done this day, or this is the note I was taking then. So I can really cross from it. I take more notes if I'm writing with fountain pens, to be honest. Yeah. 
wow, four notebooks. You're really going to town. Oh, I have far too many. Well, one of them was a third type of notebook, too, so I just finished that one a couple weeks ago. <laughs> do my own forensics. At least, at least I date mine now. That makes it a bit easier to go back and be like, ah, it was on this day. So I'm starting to see some folks are attending. Um, okay. Folks, welcome. And I want to let you know that um, Lynn and I are both pretty easygoing folks. So if you want to like ask questions, feel free. Like This is not meant to be us like just coming from the mountaintop, having some sort of absurd level of knowledge. No, I think we're, we're, we're doing some interesting stuff, but I don't think it's anything truly, absolutely brand spanking new that you shouldn't have heard of. Oh, hey, I've seen some. Hey, Carlos. <laughs> Cool. Now some of my friends are pranking me. I'm going to turn my phone off. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it into Do Not Disturb. Flynn, you are you have Do Not Disturb Pierce capabilities, but <laughs> oh, I'm special. You I can take it for you. Do you want to send me a direct message? I'm telling, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to relay the the trolls. <laughs> it's an option. I'm just I'm putting it out there. <laughs> I love it. So um, I'll put you on the spot here, Flynn. Um, I, I'm kind of surprised that you did four notebooks of stuff during your internship. Um, what, like, uh, but I'm not also, like, it's kind of weird because <laughs> I know, like, the level of effort you put into your stuff. What are some things that you would recommend people to look for when they're looking for an information or IT type internship? Looking for an internship? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. Cause I actually, I applied for a couple at like NSA and stuff a couple of years ago. And in retrospect, it would have been awful for me. I think it's, I working for a small company where you're really gonna be valued. Like for you, I know that the work I'm doing is actual work and not mm -hmm. just a case of here's some busy work for you. Go get me some coffee. It's like, hey, do this research, build this website. <laughs> I think in yeah. the case of finding something to be a good fit for you and somewhere you can actually learn something, I think is a really, really big thing because an internship should be a learning experience and it has come to that. So, well, cool. I'm glad that I could do that for you because um, my internships work is good. <laughs> and so I'm trying to push back against um, what I had. So, cool. And it's, it's been great. It's, it's a case of just, yeah, I think it's. There's, there's so many options, especially right now in InfoSec, cybersecurity, all the computer fields that you can afford to be a little picky and really, really find something that's going to be a better fit for you because you are working at it and you don't want to be miserable. It's a lot easier to go to work when you're enjoying what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And also, um, one of the things that I've kind of noticed that's your style is you put a lot of effort into it. So like, it's not, I don't know, like you're not uh, punching a clock. You're not eating a gate on this. Well, that's good. That's the one thing I guess my advice would be when you are in an internship or even in a job is take notes because I guarantee you there'll be that time when you wish you had written something down and otherwise you had to do it all over again. It's happened, I've had some commands that I've tried them like, I was kind of, I try it, but I wrote it down so I can go back and it saved me time. So I like taking notes. I think it helps. And it helps you remember stuff. Once you write it down, it's kind of like a secondary way of remembering it. Yeah, I'm a similar way. Having, like, doing the writing really helps, um, like, commit it to memory. Oh, yeah. I think it more solidifies it than anything else, which is really, really helpful. Yeah, just find someone that you can be comfortable and that you're actually going to learn something because you should and I've learned a lot so I'm thankful for that but yeah find somewhere that's going to appreciate you as more than just an intern I think 
Okay. My well, words of wisdom. All right. Well, we are about at uh, broadcast start time. Are we good for me to do my intro? Uh, yeah, please do. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's SANS webcast. Life is a bit easier with whattolog.com. My name is Carol Auth of SANS. Today's featured speakers are Mick Douglas, SAN Senior Instructor, and Flynn Weeks a is a senior, sorry, excuse me, senior cybersecurity student and intern at InfoSec Innovations. If during the webcast you have any questions for our presenters, please enter them into the questions window at any time. Please note that this webcast is being recorded and a copy of the slides and recording of this webcast will be available for viewing later today and can be found on the SANS registration page. And with that, I'd like to end the webcast over to our presenters. Thanks so much, Carol. So um, before we get started, I want to be very clear. This is meant to be a fairly interactive uh, webinar. Now, I realize that some of you might just be here for CPE and don't care too much. But I'm expecting that a lot of you who are here are just passionate about logs like we are, or maybe curious about logs. and you know, take advantage of the fact that you dialed in live and like ask questions away. We will uh, answer your questions live or some of them we may need to uh, put on pause and go at, at the uh, end of the, the talk. But please, please feel free to ask any questions. We'd be happy to help uh, dive into them in the time that we have together. So a little bit about um, who we are. So hi, my name is Mick Douglas. I founded InfoSec Innovations and I'm the managing partner of it. And we're a boutique security consultancy that tries to make like new things, you know, innovations is in our name. And so we try to move the needle forward and do novel things. And this is part of uh, our mission. Um, in my quote unquote spare time, I teach for SANS, I do 504, which is the Hacker Techniques and Incident Response class. I also do 555, which is the SIM class. And both of those have a very interesting blend of offense and defense to them. But the common thread is that you do need to have logs to do well in these fields. So this is this webinar is really near and dear to my heart. Also, I'm a member of the IONS faculty. And uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Better Safety Net. Hi, I'm Flynn Weeks. I am an intern at Infosec Innovations, and What's the Log was kind of my baby for a long time, so I'm really excited to see it get this far. Um, as Carol mentioned, I am a senior at the University of Maine at Augusta. I am a cybersecurity student with a focus in cyber forensics, and I can also be reached on Twitter at Sounds of the Time. Now, this talk is available at the SANS uh, site, and if you're watching this or watching the recording, you can certainly get it from the SANS registration site. This is also available on our website at infosecinnovations.com slash talks. So feel free to get the, the slide deck from there as well. So what we're gonna be talking about for the time that we have is this labor of love project that we've been doing called What to Log. And you know, no security project is complete unless it's got a logo of some sort. So that shows you how serious we are about what to log. Now, the thing that is worth pointing out is that within what to log, we, to the extent possible with our projects, we like to have a mission statement that helps drive how things are done on that project. And the um, mission statement for the what to log project is that it's a crowdsource site that helps teach you what to log, how they help you, and helps build custom scripts. And just a little warning, we're going to be showing you this mission statement over and over again, because it really was a driving force for what the site is and what and what would make it on the site and what wouldn't make it on the site. So what we're gonna be doing through our time together is we're gonna be highlighting what these different things are and what they mean for you. So what to log, like the, the whole site itself, okay, you know, let's just dive in and start talking about it. And this demo will give you a very quick whirlwind view of what the site is. And then we're going to dive in on some of the neater features because 
this site is um, actually a lot bigger than many people think. And one of the things that I've noticed, we don't have any tracking cookies on this site, so we don't have any of those GDPR notifications. We're not, we're not tracking you. But in me looking at the usage patterns from the logs, I've noticed that there's certain parts of the site that people are using and others aren't getting as much love. And I definitely want to show like show that. Now, the, the main thing, and I expect that most people would be doing within the site is viewing the log. So if you go to this view the log section, this is where you actually see the different you know, operating systems. You've got this neat little collapsible uh, menu that you can use for navigation. As we build out additional log sources, different operating systems will be including them here. I want to say a special shout out to Sebastian, our developer who made the front end, so thank you for that. But um, this is what most people will be using on the site, and that's perfectly okay. Um, <laughs> playing cards face up. This is a resource that I'm using a lot now in my day-to-day -day work, and I hope you use this too. But the site goes so much deeper than that. Um, one of my favorite elements that hardly anybody ever goes to is this section right up here, this OS tools. The OS tools section actually shows you how to do living off the land logging activities. And this is just a great cheat sheet that's nice and consolidated, has nice cool little graphics. It just man, it makes life easier. And um, unfortunately, as of right now, this is the least used part of the site. And um, hopefully we can drive uh, traffic to there up. Now, the next section, and this is a section that we're going to be spending a, uh, quite a bit of time talking about, is the sawmill. So now, one of the things, and we'll demo this deeper in, in a few, like, closer to the end of our time together. One of the things that we've tried to do is to make this site be super easy to use. And Sawmill is a function that I released prior to this webinar as like a little sneak peek to show you what we're doing. And the idea behind this is to actually help generate commands that you can run to learn how your systems are logging. So this is a really, really cool cheat sheet I expect that this probably will become the main draw of the site, and that, that's fine, that's great. Um, another part of the site that is super fun and I can't wait to hear Flynn talk about is the blog. We are clearly passionate about logging, we hope you are too, and we're going to be sharing a lot of that in the blog section. So. In a minute, we'll be talking about what you can expect in this blog because it's not going to be a you know traditional blogging. Oh, excellent question. So is Mac OS covered in terms of logging? And the answer is yes, with a little asterisk. We have it in our dev instance, or we're building it out in our dev instance. We don't yet have that. So we'll cover that in just a little bit. Um, so yeah, we, we will cover cover Mac. Uh, it's not available just yet, and we'll dive into why that is, but it will be on the site soon. So I've already kind of covered um, the main functions of the site. Uh, honestly, this slide's more of a throw, throw um, for the people who are gonna be watching the um, webinar afterwards or just wanna go through the deck. Again, the deck is freely available. So this sounds really weird that we showed you the site and now we need to go backwards a bit, but it's really important that you understand why we built this site because this is a very weird and different project and we need community involvement, but we don't, I don't know how to phrase this without it sounding kind of snobbish but we want the right kind of community involvement. We don't want help that will distract or pull us off mission. And so what I want to do is help explain like why we built the site, like what 
drove us to do this so that if you understand the origins of the site, I think that you will be much quicker in alignment in terms of what the site can do and what the site can be. So let's dive into why we did this. Um, I know it sounds really weird, but we had to. Um, there's no really good, at least that we were able to find, and boy did we try. We couldn't find any good platform agnostic vendor, you know, neutral site that shows all the different logs that are out there. And so it became very much of, yeah, the information's out there, but it's a horrible scavenger hunt and nobody's done this. Now, I'm sure other people have thought like, oh, this would be a neat thing to do, but nobody's been in the situation where they either had the time, resources, or interest to actually start doing this. And I, I gotta say a big shout out, thank you to Flynn, who actually got this whole thing started. Because, and I, Flynn, I don't even remember what project it was for, but I gave you a task to research a bunch of logging options for some, it was some client-based question. I don't, I don't know if you remember which one it was for. I was looking into incident response a little bit more and uh, logging obviously came up because it's a great way to clean up after an attack. And this conversation pretty much happened of, where's this resource for it? Yeah, and it just, it was really weird because, you know, one of the things that happens after you've been in the field for a while, you know, in a particular industry, you stop looking at the elephant that's in the room. And when somebody has this fresh new set of eyes, like they ask these questions that you've just kind of taken for granted certain things. And when Flynn asked that, like, it, like my head exploded. I was just like, I don't know, like, why don't we have that? And so we said like, oh, let's build this. All we need to do is compile the information. It can't be that hard. Wow. We are like nine months later. <laughs> Uh, and we're, I mean, we're at several hundred hours of time between all the people at InfoSec Innovations who've been doing this between you, T, myself, uh, Sebastian, certainly. So um, this definitely has been a labor of love for the community. And we hope that you folks start using it. And when we say that this is for the community, I want to be clear that if you're in IT, if you're in security, this site really is for you. Now, I'm not gonna read you this slide, okay? Chances are you've got your own motivations for you know, why you're here and what you wanna get out of this site. But I wanna be clear that from the get-go, we knew that we needed to have a resource that spoke to just beyond us. And so, to that end, we have worked very, very hard to empathize and try to come up with, you know, what, what do you need in order to succeed in your day-to-day -day job? And later in the webcast, we're going to share with you how to get involved because there's a very good chance that you have a use case for this site that we just haven't thought about. And it's not because we're malicious. It's not because we're, you know, kicking you to the curb, it's because we don't know. So help us get better. So uh, I see another question. Uh, thank you for this, this is a great one. Any plans to add uh, SQL or web logs? And the answer is absolutely. Um, we're gonna cover our current state where we're at with what we've got right now. And then we'll talk about the next steps, but the short answer, yes, we are planning to do that. Um, really, that makes actually for a really nice transition. It's almost like that question was perfectly timed. Um, where we're at with the site right now is, and this is by design, we're kind of like in Death Star 2.0, Return of the Jedi, right? It's, it's dangerous, it works, but it's still being built. And so what you're looking at is a viable functional site that has a lot of content but you're also looking at the scaffolding of what will eventually be. 
And so we've got the operating system tools, the major, we got a couple major operating systems. Um, I haven't gone into the logging levels though. That This is a very interesting, subtle, um, subtle attack. I, I need to be very transparent with you. Um, one of the goals of this project is to push back on the conventional wisdom of what logs are or how they're gathered or how they're used. And the logging levels is a very carefully crafted shot across the bow of the rest of the industry because how things are done almost certainly isn't good. A lot of people, when they say, I don't like my SIM, I don't like my log aggregator, I don't like my SOAR, what they're really talking about is that they don't have the right logs. They're not using the right logs. And those issues ripple through their security stack and manifest in the SIM or in the SOAR. And so we'll get to that in a little bit. So I, I do want to be very clear, though, and, and honest with everybody from the start. There are some meta-level themes that we're going to explore in this webinar that are not immediately apparent that you need to be aware of because if you're going to contribute with this project, there are some things that we're going to nudge against the conventional wisdom. Um, and then, of course, the sample codes. Uh, this is what everybody's really uh, resonated with the community, and we're absolutely going to stay committed to doing that. So this uh, dives really neatly into what we want to do. So Flynn, what's in the roadmap? So we've kind of started picking up steam about the log, and we really don't intend on slowing down anytime soon. And this kind of answers the two questions that were asked about if we're adding certain things. So in the future for what to log, we're planning on adding how to enable and disable logs from the command line so you can turn on and off logging. Mac OS uh, logs are being released. Specifically, we're working on Catalina at the moment, and those are in progress. We got some of them, had a couple more to do. We're also looking at adding other Linux distributions, such as Red Hat, um, potentially others in the future if we can think of other ones that really need support. We're also looking at adding more Windows logs. There is a wealth of information that is logged by Windows. So we want to add a bit more about that and about what it can give you. Application logs, we are adding those. We are adding specifically web servers first, and then we're going to branch out a little bit more from there. Uh, firewall logs are also coming because we think that's, again, really, really important. We also want to make what's log a lot more accessible to people and so you can get it in the format that's going to work best for you. We're planning on releasing it like a GitHub, a JSON, and a spreadsheet, and other formats. They said just to make it a bit more accessible so you can really get what you need out of it. Right. And it, I want to uh, jump in for just a second. There's a really cool question. Are there any plans to have other uh, projects like Sigma or Elk to provide assembly lines so that you can say, like, hey, I want to use this Sigma alert rule, like what are the logs that we need to generate? That's something that we've thought about. Um, I think that we need a few more infrastructure elements set up, but I definitely want to explore that space. Another thing somewhat related to this question that um, would be one that I'm, I think would be even more helpful in the short term would be um, to generate uh, configs for tools like uh, syslog, um, uh, you know, nxlog, different log agents, so that you can copy and paste elements to enable or disable the log collection, not only on the OS itself, but also on the log agents that are used. So there's absolutely some plans uh, to, to go down that path. But one of the things that we need to do a little bit before then is resolve some other dependencies. And I know this sounds like a little bit of a stretch, but we do need to solve some um, logging uh, framework dependencies first. And it actually transitions really well into yeah. this next slide. 
So we are in the process of adding these. Actually, these are available on some of our logs. We have to build it out a little bit more and go a bit deeper. But we are adding support for the logging frameworks and what they require. Um, specifically, we're focusing on NIST Special Publication 853 and 800-171. Um, we're also looking at some guidances like JP Cert CC and the NSA Cyber Event Forwarding Guidance because they give us a lot of information about what they think you should log, so it gives us another perspective. We're also adding HIPAA compliance and PCI DSSS so that you can, again, just make sure that you're in compliance with things and what that means for your logs. We're also going to add a bit more about these frameworks and how they apply to logs because they're not always written about, here's a log you need to collect. We're going to try and break it down and say, this, is a, this framework needs these logs specifically. Right. And um... One item that I could envision, we're not there yet, but as this functionality builds out, I could envision there being a component on the site where you say, I need to follow this particular framework. You click it, and then it will build out all the log commands like that you need in order to be compliant with that particular framework. We're not yeah. there yet, but we're Hi. heading so I just saw a question come in about the time frame to have the HIPAA and PCI DSS integrated. I don't can't give you an exact date on that quite yet. We are it said it, some of the logs actually already have that information out there. Um, they are big, big documents to look through and make sure I don't want to miss anything. So they are coming. They are already actually in the works. I just don't want to give an exact date on that. And it's also the question about an offline repo that's kind of coming a bit more later with Sawmill and something we'll discuss later. Yep. Yep, absolutely. So another next step for us is the um, we want to get more information out of the logs rather than just having more logs everywhere. Um, this includes a breakdown of each field of a log and what it means for the log and what it means for you. So just getting more information out of our logs. And also we're going to provide a suggested enrichments and how to get even more information out of these logs because there can be some times that you want a little bit more information. There are also times you want less information. So we're going to suggest fields that you can remove. But um, don't just take our word for this. Please always consult compliance and legal first. But this can help with just general storage because it adds up. I mean, you have sometimes millions of logs being generated on a network. And if you can start removing fields for your own needs, then you can really start saving space and making analysis a lot easier. Yeah, and one thing, I, I don't know what the attendees on, online right now or even those who will be listening in the future, they, you might be freaking out when you see this bullet point. And I want to be very clear, we are not advocating that you, you know, break any contract clauses or violate any laws or whatever. That's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is that if you can in your logs, you should do it. And one of the things that I'm a little upset with the industry as a whole is it seems that there's a pretty strong perverse economic incentive for people to have this log everything approach. And that just doesn't work. It, it doesn't scale. It doesn't, it, it, and actually in, taken to extremes, this approach is the root of many of our problems in the industry. Um, you absolutely, with a few exceptions, can remove fields from logs. Now, the big thing I want to be clear about here is I'm not suggesting that you alter the system of record. I would never advocate that. But what I am saying is that you're almost certainly already, if you're doing any kind of data analytics on your logs, you likely have a working copy that is an excise or an excerpt from your actual logs. That's all we're advocating here, is that you get the, the minimal amount in order to tell the story. And in some cases, I've worked with clients where we have 60% or more data reduction, and that's huge. So it, the, the savings can be mammoth. Oh, yeah, I see a call out to Malware Archaeology. Um, I love, love that site and um, also am uh, happy to uh, call some of the folks that are involved in that project friends. So 
Yeah, we, um, that's, you know what, I'll own it. I should have put that into this presentation. So that's a massive oversight on my part. Sorry about that. So, okay. At this point, based on the questions and the feedback that we're receiving, it, it sounds like we're on to something, okay? Now, this is where the whole point of this webinar is from here on out. Yeah. Help us help you. Flynn? Just real quick, there's a question about, um, is there, is this my non-scene point of view? Uh, hmm. As far as our log parsing and taking the fields out, yes. It's a bit more of just for your own records, making an analysis easier. Okay. Um, also about the legacy windows, we actually also support Windows 7 at the moment, so which is kind of considered a legacy version. I would like to go back a bit further and touch on some of the older, at least even in blog posts, talk about some of those older Windows versions, like someone just mentioned Windows XP, because they are unfortunately still used today. So I think it's something that can definitely be considered. We had talked about it in the past. And we have XP in our lab, so we absolutely can do that. So yeah, but um, uh, there was one question, does the website tell you what credentials you have to run the different utilities under? No, we don't. And that's actually a really good uh, call out. So I'm making a note about that. We'll, um, most of the time you're going to need admin level for what uh, we're, we're doing because yeah. um, especially on Windows machines, the security log, you will, will not be able to interact with in any meaningful way. Yeah, and I know that's mentioned in the PowerShell part of this, but I think I have to add that to in that view. Thank you for that. The, uh, yeah. So yes, as Mike was saying, we need your help. This is a, we take a lot of ideas and it's a lot of crowdsourced information. We really want the different points of view to be part of what to log so we can make a better resource overall. Yeah. And so, Flynn, how can they reach out to us? There's several different ways. Um, we have a Twitter account set up for what to log where we post a lot of information about the blog posts, any changes that are being made, and we're also planning to have a bit more conversations going on there. We also have a whole subreddit set up um, so you can really start a proper conversation and have it as a thread. And it's more, that's more than just what to log. That can also be as um, about logging in general, about problems you're having with logging, any questions you have. And not only will I be able to answer them, but other people in the community can go back and answer them as well. So we're kind of trying to get those on the go as well. Yep. And one thing to point out, uh, the choice for Reddit was a deliberate one. We were um, discussing like having a Slack instance or a Discord server for this. And um, eventually we settled on Reddit because the idea of having a moderated threaded conversation that will be longer lasting than Discord, like I'm a big fan of Discord and Slack, but for these sorts of conversations, I think that it's important that we have a record of what people discussed and have it be a little more um, less fleeting than the stuff on Discord that just scrolls on by and you'll never see again. Exactly. So we kind of basically also because I've an archive. There's a question about live versus offline commands. I think that's something we can definitely explore. There's not a, always a huge difference, but yeah, I think it's definitely something we can definitely start looking at. Yeah, um, just shooting from the hip, most of the commands that we are using, you would, instead of just running the command as um, as presented, you would just point to the dead box artifact. Yeah. So like the EBTX file on the one that you've recovered from the dead box. But I, I like that. that. That should be at a minimum. That that's a really good uh, question, and I think should be a blog post. I was thinking the same thing. But yeah, this is this is exactly what we want. We want these other suggestions and other things that you guys want to see in the site because it makes it a better resource not just for us but for you and for everybody so that's really really important and it kind of yeah. ties into our next slide yeah yeah and whoops let's advance we have already gotten some really really great suggestions i know mick has reached out on twitter several times and just seen what do you guys want to see in the site and um these people all gave us the suggestions for a lot of our compliance um, coverage. So thank you. Huge shout out to them. We have been working on that pretty heavily behind the scenes. Um, but other things like that, we'd like to say, 
we want a conversation and we want to know what you want to see on the site. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. if we just do this for ourselves, it'll be fun, but like it's a lot more fun when it's a party. And we're actually, uh, I saw a question about miter attack. We're talking about that a little bit later, actually, that's mentioned in here. So, yeah. as far as contributions, right now we're really um, working on set. It's just we want to start a, with a conversation at the very least, and we want to just hear your ideas and inputs. Um, and that can then, can then we can figure out how to translate that into the site or into a blog post or something like that. Yeah, we haven't really thought about um, any expectations, really. I mean, we would be just eternally grateful. Like, I know this sounds really weird, but I'm the type of person that if you're like, hey, this log is wrong, you got it bad, like this is bad and you should feel bad, well, I will feel bad. Tell me what we're missing and we'll fix it. Like, if you want to do more and help out more, like, for goodness sakes, yeah, we'll take it. But um, this isn't something where we're looking for like a, an ongoing uh, level of input from you. Um, I know that there's some open source uh, projects where like if you don't contribute to, at a certain threshold, you get like lesser status. Now this is just a, hey, let's all just kick this thing and see what we can do to make it better. Now, one of the key things that we're trying to do here, and this is the bit where some folks might get a little uncomfortable. So understand that I'm a big person on nudging controversy. I don't want to quite poke it in the eye, but I do want to rub up against it a little bit to make, if you're not having some discomfort, you're doing things wrong. And there is a lot that's wrong in the industry with logging. And so what we're gonna to try to do to the extent possible is explore and challenge some of the conventional wisdom because sometimes it, it's based off of IT ritual that might've worked decades ago, but it doesn't carry over to today. So, so um, I, let, let's, let's dive into like some things, okay? Probably the most controversial thing that a lot of uh, people struggle with is that not all logs are equal. And, you know, not to pick on Windows, but I'm totally going to pick on Windows. If you've ever looked at the Windows event log, the signal to noise ratio on that thing can be horrific. And it, it just boggles my mind that a lot of people treat logs as if they're these sacred things. And there's some logs, like in the uh, system, event log that I just, I, I don't think I'll ever care about, ever, and I'm passionate about logs. So I want the industry to stop treating logs as this monolithic uniform thing. Certain events are infinitely more interesting than others. And so one of the items in, in the next slide, we're going to show you how we're trying to solve this, how we're trying to nudge the industry into a different view of things. And part of the reason that we're wanting to do this is simple, raw economics. If you dial up all the logging, you're going to crush your storage. You'll even have some localized network um, performance issues. Okay, We don't want that. And part of the reason that logging doesn't work is an ugly truth. Many of the SIM vendors, many of the log aggregator vendors, and a lot of the cloud providers have a perverse economic incentive so that you log everything. Because they charge by the events per second that are sent to them. They charge by the gig you consume per day. And that's silly. What we are going to advocate is for a pretty strong, some would even say radical departure from how logging is done. And you have to understand that logs are only useful for a certain time frame. And this phrase, half-life of usefulness, comes from fellow uh, SANS instructor, Justin Henderson. And really, I, like I, I knew when I first met him that Justin and I would be friends, but what really made me chuckle was the day that he said, you know, some logs age well, you know, a transaction that shows things that you can 
go back in time even a year later and show what happened when and who did what. That's awesome. And I agree. I thought that that was neat. But he also shared with me that some age like milk. And that is true. Like if you've ever done analysis on like a DNS log, a malware domain stays malware not that long. And so what we're trying to do is treat logs for the, the nuanced things that they are. And how we're approaching that is using this log leveling system. Now, each log, whether it's an operating system or an application, will be broken down into three buckets. And um, you saw this actually in passing when I showed the site, this minimum, ideal, and extreme. So now minimum, as the name implies, this is what we on the What to Log project think are the bare minimum of logs to collect. These are logs that shouldn't be generating too much noise on a given day. They help tell the story that needs to be told and nothing more. They're not fancy, but they get the job done. Now, moving up in terms of volume are the ideal logs. And these are things that may be happening a little more frequently. They may be a little noisier. So the signal to noise ratio might not be there. And then extreme logging. The idea behind extreme logging is this within reason grabs the logs that tell the story but are a bit more noisy. Now, a couple things. I've been trying to be as honest as practical with y'all about this. And one thing that I do want to point out is that these minimum, ideal, and extreme, we didn't come off the top of some mountain. We don't have this elder wisdom on what makes what. What we're doing here is we have gone and looked at the various frameworks that Flynn mentioned a couple slides back. We've gone and asked a couple different industry experts, and we've consulted different um, resource guides from some of the certs that were mentioned on earlier slides and a couple that I neglected to put in there, so sorry about that. Um, what we've tried to do is break them out into what their usability is. Your mileage may vary. That said, what we're trying to do is give you a resource that you can use to management when they say, well, do we really need to collect this thing? You can use this site as a tool. So feel free to use this. Now, I'm sure you might have a different opinion on some of these, and this would be one that we would love to get some feedback on. You know, do we have this right? Um, and we do realize that these, these will probably fluctuate over time. So uh, there's a great question on network uh, correlation. Um, I, I'm gonna put a pin in that one. That's, that's one that we'll uh, answer if time permits. If not, um, I'll, uh, I'll address that on a, a very lengthy Twitter uh, blast. That's an there awesome is a uh, blog post actually a little bit about event correlation. It was something I wanted to go into a little bit more further in a future blog post, but that's a really good question, yeah. Yep. So, Flynn, take but, it away. Yeah, speaking of, I guess part of our foundational thing for what to log was how logs help you. Because I'm a firm believer of the fact that logs really, really do help people. They are huge sources of information that can help you clean up after an attack, detect an attack, and all sorts. I mean, get into that a little bit more. I think is let logs help you. Um, they can be early signs of attack. You can see something strange happening and prevent it. They're also really, really good breadcrumbs in the wake of an attack. You may be able to see the whole event and really trace out and figure out exactly what happened. They're also just a general health check. Even if it isn't an attack, you can really see something isn't working just quite right and you can do whatever you need to do with that. And that just saves everyone time and because it saves time and also saves money, which I think most people like to do. So I think it's a case of logs can really help you and it's in more ways than one. I think it's something that's really important that people tend to forget with logs is let them help you and let them help you in the right ways. Yeah, one of the rants that I went on when we were preparing this deck is about the general health checks. If you're in a security group at a company where you're not getting the funding that you need, 
I want you to understand that what I'm about to say comes from a place of love, and, and I'm not uh, hating you, but you do need to understand that if you are not getting the funding you need, it's your fault. It really is. Because logs tell how the infrastructure is behaving. And you as the security practitioner have a view that most organizations would kill for. And so if you can't tell how systems are performing, like, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, let's frame it differently, okay? What's the difference between a ransomware attack where your CPU is spiked and your RAM is totally consumed? What's the difference of that versus a machine that's over-provisioned and needs to be, you know, swapped out with a more powerful system? The answer is almost none. So if you're gathering data that detects certain security events, it almost certainly can be leveraged into things that the business cares about. So operations might not care about security, but at almost every organization, they care about availability. And logs can be used and in a way weaponized to that end. So let the logs help you because frankly, they're telling the story. In many cases, they're screaming and shouting and nobody's listening. Now, to that end, one of the things that we're doing on each and every entry, we have a certain taxonomy of how the entries are going to be broken down. Of course, we'll say, you know, what the logging event is. We give you what operating system or application that log comes from. But then we also tell you why we why you want this log. And this gets back to something that I really quite dislike about how, you know, quote unquote traditional operations and you know quote unquote traditional security is done it's just like do this thing or else the auditor going to hit you and if you do the thing auditor don't hit you and you're happy well that's dumb that's not how you should be doing things instead what we do is we tell you what stories you can tell with a particular log we also for the ones that we've got on the site right now we tell you what frameworks can be advanced by gathering this data. Now, earlier there was a question about, will this have any integrations with tools like Sigma? And this is where that integration can happen as we start building out this, um, this functionality, we would be able to uh, tie the different Sigma IDs to these. So stay tuned on that. One item that we will always have is how to do the check from the command line now you can copy and paste this, or you can use Sawmill, which is something we'll cover in just a little bit here. We also show you how to enable via the GUI. Um, for the Windows stuff, this, in, this is gonna be mainly um, GPO or the local security policy, local uh, audit policy settings. And then we give you how to view from the GUI or the CLI. Now, this is the part that I, oh, yeah. I saw a really good point. Someone mentioned how if you're tracking applications, it can be more of a, someone said, it, if it's an expensive one, you can see that, did I waste my money or is this application actually being used? I think that's a really good point and it kind of highlights how logs can be for more than just a health check. They can be for a, is this actually worth it? Kind of yeah. a, just more uses. So that was a good point. Yeah. That's all, sorry. Yeah, that's an excellent, excellent point. Uh, thing. So builds the custom scripts. This is the thing that we teased before this webinar. You know, you can copy and paste each entry. So let's go back to the what to log site. If you go to the logs, let's do like software installed. I could copy and paste this and run this in a PowerShell prompt. I could do that. Or I could make advantage, take advantage of the what to log sawmill function. And here's how the what to log sawmill function works. What you do is rather than just copying and pasting, you simply say, add the sawmill. Now, we probably should make a little notification that it was successfully added. But what we do is you can think of this as now having been put into a shopping cart. 
So if you go to view sawmill selection, you'll see that the software installed is already selected. So now if I do get my scripts, it actually generates the command that you need in order to show that element. Um, one thing that Sebastian, the developer, hey Sebastian, if you're watching a replay, thank you for all your hard work on this. Um, one of the things that's neat about this is you can select multiple log elements. You could even uh, select them at a group like that. What you do is you simply say, uh, get my scripts, and it will pull down the elements that you need in order to accomplish this. Now, you can either copy paste this or put it into a PowerShell script, and you're done. Now, some of you probably are like, but we're uh, you know, a mixed environment. We're not just Windows, we also have Unix. Well, as you can see, we have Unix. And one of the things that's neat about this is the way it's done, like you select whichever things you're interested in, and say, get my scripts, and we break it down for you based off of what um, method you're going to be pulling that information. So we've tried to make this super easy, super helpful, and it's going to be going further. Soon, we're going to be having functionality where we can have it show you, is it enabled or disabled, and then also have functionality that um, will change that log setting. So right now, what, what to log sawmill does is it will pull the log entry, which at least in our analysis, we think is going to be the most used component. But we also want to make sure that you can check the log and um, pull or adjust the log setting to all using this capability. But as cool as that is, there's actually a feature of what to log that's even better. And that's teaching you how to think about logging. And we're going to do that through the blog. So the log blog, which is very fun to say, is a weekly dive into logs, logging systems, information about logs, all sorts. And I try and make it so it's short, easy to read, and hopefully not incredibly boring. Um, and we also feature updates about what to log there, including the new versions and new features. We tried to remain as transparent as possible when we were doing what to log, and that was kind of part of it, was we wanted you to know exactly what changes we were making to the site and what we were thinking of doing, that kind of stuff. So the blog exists as not only new information about logs or a deep dive into logs, but also just about the site itself. Yeah. Now, we're not done with the presentation just yet, but we do want to pause for a second and say thank you. Okay. We've got a closing, but right now I do want to say thanks to you. Like, I, I really appreciate these comments, these questions. We've been making notes like uh, we're going to be making changes to the site based off of just the feedback that we've received so far. So that's awesome. And I want to say thank you. I also want to say thanks to the Stan's Defensive Operations team for letting us give this webinar. This is a weird webinar, and I want to say thanks for letting us give this. You know, I, as much as it's cool that you know folks are learning how to stop the you know solar winds attack, it's cool that they allowed us to focus on something that's so foundational, so small that it often gets overlooked. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say thanks to Flynn. Um, this, you know. There was something really cool about this project, and I, I know that this never would have happened without her asking not just the question that started this project, but all the questions and challenges that she did along the way. And this is absolutely a lot, a lot of this project is due to Flynn. So thank you, Flynn. And thank you to you too. Like I said, without you, I, I wouldn't have had the opportunity and the chance to learn so much about this. And you have been unwavering in your support for me on this project. I really appreciate it. So thank you for that. Well, you're thank welcome. you everyone that's here listening and all those suggestions and questions we've had because I said it gives us a lot more ideas to add to the site, which is what we wanted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is awesome. Now, now comes the big closing. And this is kind of a weird thing. Um, here's the deal. Um, I feel that this is the webinar we shouldn't have had to give. I feel that this is a site that should not need to exist. The fact that we don't have this clearinghouse is hella strange. You know, this, this used to be better handled back in the 60s, 70s, and even to a lesser extent, the 80s. I know I'm dating myself, 
but I remember the launch books. I learned Unix from them. Why is it that we don't cover logging? Like it, it just, it, I realize that a lot of people think that logging isn't cool. I realize people think that logging isn't fun. They're dead wrong. It's literally the foundational building block of all of IT, all of security. And every single breach that I've worked, every single purple team engagement, every single pen test that I work, I see that the defenders aren't detecting the attacks because they're not seeing the logs. And it makes me so sad. These shouldn't be tripping points. These should be table stakes. We're not there. We need your help. And this is going to take a long time to fix this because it's taken decades to get to this point. And so please, like to the extent possible, if it's a single little like, hey, think about this, thank you. But if you wanna do more, man, will we take it. This is a long, long journey we're starting and we're just starting. And a big part of it is that I don't want it to be all doom and gloom. I have had so much fun doing this. Like, Flynn and I have had tons of cool webinars where we've discussed and really geeked out on these sorts of things. You can have fun with fundamentals. I think that's a big thing is logs actually, in my opinion, can be really fun. They really, really paint a story for you and they are the building blocks to that story. And if you don't have the building blocks, you don't have the story at all. So I think if you understand that logs, they can be fun. There's a lot of information in them. They paint the picture of what happened in an event. But I think most importantly, they, you can get the right answer and the whole answer and getting to the bottom of things is exciting. You can figure out, it's that success of finding out exactly what happened and really understanding an event to its fullest. And logs allow you to do that. They give you that power to be like, this is exactly what happened. This is when it happened. This is who did it. And that's kind of, it's a little bit of fun. It's a little bit of, I can understand now what happened. I can understand the whole story, which is always satisfying. Absolutely. And one thing that I realize that's kind of weird is I, I don't know how long you folks have been in security, but one thing that I've noticed is that we're starting to think about the security problem differently. You know, um, OODA loops come from the military in terms of how you can better orient and respond to attackers. Um, you know, Lockheed Martin gave us the cyber kill chain. Lockheed lawyers, I put the TM, please don't send me some cease and desists. But these sorts of ways of thinking about what an attack is and what it, what it constitutes helped us start thinking about things differently. And I don't, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound too grandiose or anything, but I'm hoping that this project can at least be part of a rethinking of what logs are because you can do some amazing things. I mean, look at the work that MITRE's done. Like attack, the attack framework is amazing and awesome. I love it. But, you know, look at some of the more foundational projects like the Common Weakness Enumeration, the CWE. That's one that does not get nearly enough love because attack is sucking all the oxygen out of the room. And I think that's kind of what's happened with logs. You know, I remember a time before firewalls and you had to use logs. And now like everything else has kind of just drawn our attention away and we've lost this really needed critical skill. And you know, there are people who are doing it and you know, what we wanna do is just kind of rekindle the excitement and get things going. So in closing, here's what we need help on. Exactly, and we do need the help. It's, a, it's not something you can do on our own. We've gotten quite far doing, we want the input, we want to hear what frameworks should we cover? What OSs should we cover? What application logs should we cover? We really wanna hear what you think we should add to this site. And we're happy to take, if you wanna give us information as well, we're happy to take that. And also, what can we do to make this site more useful for you and more helpful for you? What, I guess the thing is, what stories do you wanna tell? Because logs tell that story. And if you have the right logs, you can tell almost any story. And if you have any suggestions, please reach out. We're on Twitter. What's log is E? What's log account? Obviously, um, better safety net is Mick and I am Sounds of the Time. If you want to reach out personally, but you can reach out to us, suggestions, ideas, anything. And of course, the subreddit is there. If you really want to start a conversation about logs, logging, what to log itself, we're always there. So. 
Yep. So we've only got a few more moments left in the webinar. We'll be addressing questions now. Um, feel free to type any questions that you have. Um, <laughs> uh, somebody just said, I'm glad you observed this, which I had this years ago. Um, about a couple months into this project, I was like, I was feeling the same thing. So yeah, I, I get the feeling. Um, I see a comment about the number of sysadmins that avoid logs. It's a black art they couldn't understand, and definitely. That's kind of the point is we want to make logs more accessible, but make them a little less scary to people. They're not that scary. They should be pretty. They should. You should use them. They should be helpful for you. You should want to use them. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who's giving the kind words that they're liking this project. Yes. I cannot overstate how um, happy that makes me because we invested a substantial amount of time and effort and the, the our pro we have a Proxmox lab that is absolutely unreasonable and a lot of it is dedicated to this uh to this project so uh, it just uh makes me all warm and fuzzy inside yes and um, so this is kind of been my baby for the past almost a year now so it's definitely nice to see people enjoying it there is a question about vertical application that aren't widely used again it's something we're willing to add as long as we know yeah. what you want us to add we can add it i think it's definitely something we can definitely look into yeah um okay um Yep, so um, some making comments about like sims and like defaults. Well, I, I get that. Um, part of it is that given the complexity of environments, um, having worked at a value at, at a VAR and also at a MSSP, a lot of orgs don't invest the time to set up sims appropriately. So getting beyond those defaults is tricky. And um, part of that is that they, they just, they don't invest appropriately. And I hope, I hope that this site can and this project can start nudging against that just a little bit. We kind of want to shake things up a little bit. Not overly so, but I think definitely it's time to get a bit of a new perspective and understand things just because that's the way things are doesn't mean that's where they have to be all the time. Um, oh, th this is an interesting one. Uh, there's no uh, real typical best practice. Um, yeah, the struggle is finding someone who actually cares about the data information. Yeah, that you know what? That's that's an excellent point. And I guess you know, I I would like it if everyone in IT went to the site and used it. I realize that only a very thin sliver of folks are going to be using this, but for those that are willing to walk the path, I want it to be a lot less punishing. Um, you shouldn't need a 30 terabyte SAN with, uh, we're at, uh, I think a half a gig of RAM now with 128 cores in your lab environment to do this sort of analysis. Like that's not a reasonable cost. Like what, if we can lower that barrier to entry and make it so that people can join in the party easier, that's that's the win for us. Exactly, we wanna make it accessible and make logs a little less scary and a little more information. Uh, do you compare what type of log info should be on uh, domain controller versus workstation? We don't really explore that yet. Um, Oh, uh, seen some uh, about the calculated yes that was fixed but has not been pushed this morning. We noticed that as well. Thank you. So point oh, that yeah, out. yeah, that's the we we found that in one of our uh, pre-show demos. The the uh, slash is a little wonky. Yeah. Um, but uh, the domain controller versus workstation, um, we don't get into that directly, but it's kind of tangential. We can explore how to make that a little more apparent like a lot of these things wouldn't be caught from them uh, you can only catch them on one versus the other okay also the point about log events versus authorization that is a very good point 
Um, yes, they are different. I, there's a blog post about one of the authorization blogs. I kind of want to explore that a bit further because that's a very good point is there are differences. Yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time. I just wanted to say thanks again to everyone who attended. I also want to say thanks to the ISI clients. Um, a lot of your uh, money got folded into this project. So when you're uh, when you buy ISI services, we put it to use for community things like this. So if you want more stuff like that, come aboard and we'll put it to good use. So Errol, we're done. Over to you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Flynn and Mick, for your great presentation, which helps bring this content to the SANS community. To our audience, we greatly appreciate you listening in. For a schedule of all upcoming and archived SANS webcasts, including this one, please visit sans.org forward slash webcasts. Until next time, take care, and we hope to have you back again for the next SANS webcast.